so we're having this press conference today because, you know, really, like, 11 days have already passed. There, we're in a very public location. There must be a number of cameras in this area. We're, we're at a prominent park down a block from the East River and from Gracie Mansion. We know that this is an area that would be highly surveilled by the NYPD. And inside Penny's taxi, there was actually a camera. So we want more answers. We want a more expeditious investigation so we can find Brother Kenny and the family can finally have some answers. So um, before I say more, I would like to ask Brother Richard, who is here to make a statement on behalf of the Chow family. Yes, I'm a Richard Chow. So I, my brother name is Yu Ming Chow, we used to call him Kenny Chow. His name, is was missing since May 11, 2018. He is an Asian, age 56 years old, weighs about 140 pounds, a height 5 feet 6 inches. I want to say my brother, who cares about family and he's a good husband. He working so hard, working seven days a week. He's Kenny Chow is a person who works very, very hard and his family. I'm here asking all of you, anyone see my brother Kenny Chow, so please contact NYPD or you can call, reach, call me anytime. So please appreciate it, all you guys coming to helping us. Thank you so much. You know, um, I don't know if anyone has any questions, um, but I just wanted to say a few more words. You know, like as, as a workforce, as a community, we're a really sick and tired of having to talk about the possibility of drivers being gone. Um, since December, we know of more drivers that have committed suicide. We know that Brother Kenny was very depressed from the financial stress.
actually drove it alone, and that's why he had no permission. When you drive alone and you're the owner driver, you are allowed to put a camera instead of uh, being required to put the partition in the passenger. So the fact that Brother Kenny had a camera in the car, this was a man who was dedicated to working every day on his own to support a family that he loved. spoke with anyone from the NYPD about the investigation? You mean when I spoke to the NYPD? Uh, the last time, I think so, uh, last Tuesday, last Tuesday, I, uh, I, took to the, I spoke to the NYPD because he, he, he took, he wanted uh, the car, take it, his car parking around the corner, the so NYPD asked me to take the key, take the drive the car, the, and the, the police department and then you open the car and they check everywhere the, in, the whole car investigated and then you check the camera and they call the camera company and they find uh, how to find uh, the, the picture they stick in the skating have you called them have you followed up uh yeah i called the police the, the, the detective but he said uh, no clue or nothing no no answer do you know if they looked at any of the video cameras here in this neighborhood? So I, I cannot, only the, the investigator or NYPD, they can look at the camera. So probably the, the investigator, they look, already check the camera, but they don't give me the answer or anything. So what kind of conversations did you have with your brother um, in the days or weeks leading up to his death? What was the last, like the the last year and me conversations, he, I, he called me, so I mean, everything is okay. I asked him to, everything is okay, you know, good, good. And then we, we, we like get talking very short. And when was that? At what? the time, I think so, the Thursday around, uh, Thursday around 11, 11 a.m. 11 a.m.? 11 a.m., yes. And then was that the day before? The day, the the day, day before, he yeah, is missing, yes. Was he working that day, the day he disappeared? Was that yeah, the day he walked in, he walked in the day, uh, I, I saw he picked up three it is a meter in the tree. He, he picked up three three person and then he, after five thirty PM he, he, he the last person five thirty PM he, after that he don't pick up anything, he cut the car the corner and then uh, see some missing at the same. Do you know if he generally came into this area like for maybe you know for a rest stop or use the bathroom in the car? Did he generally do that as a part of the so normally we do parking around here, we use the, the restroom and then we take a coffee break or we'll stand the corner around the York Avenue, we do it all. Okay, so he's come in this area in the past? Yes, yes. Okay. Do you think something happens to him? Somebody robs him or something perhaps? Oh, so I, that's, I don't have an idea. So, so. so that's why you think the camera is Yeah, that's a, that's a looking, we, we have a camera on the corner over there, the post, there's a NYPD camera. So. Where is the direction going? After he parked the car, I 
don't know where his direction go to. Only the NYPD check the, the, the camera, so we, they, they know. Has the detective that you spoke to, so did you told you that they've looked at that camera yet already, or are they, they, no, won't, no, no. they won't give you any information? No, I, just I, no? I asked the corner, the, the, the building, the super, super, he said, there's a camera over there, so you call the police, there's a camera that you can investigate it. So I called the police, so I told the police also, they have a camera there, you can investigate the camera, but the, the police, I don't know what they investigate, they, 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 they still investigating. Did the investigators say yes. they would look at it? Or? Yes, yes. Do you have, do you have faith that they're doing enough? Uh, I don't think so, not enough, you know, we, because uh, it's already 11 days missing, so we, we need to, as soon as possible, we're looking, uh, you know, find, find him home safely, I, I, I'm home. So, you know, his family, it's because of his, his wife is very sick, she, she's a, a stick for colon cancer, so she needs the help. So, you know, my brother come home, take care, go to the hospital, take care. So we need help. So that's why I need, as soon as possible, please help me or my, my brother family to come home safely. Thank you.
to no longer renew licenses, you know, issue licenses to new applicants when licenses expire. And we need to put in requirements so that if you do, if in order to keep your vehicle license, you have to show that you're actually working, you know, somewhere close to full-time hours in this industry. Secondly, the meter. What, what Uber and Lyft have done is, for years, they kept dropping the rate of fare as a, as a crack, you know, in order to lure customers. Today, what they do is use something called upfront pricing, where they actually charge the customer more than what the customer would pay on a taxi meter. However, they publicize lower rates, so they're, they're still doing the false advertising claiming to be cheaper. But what, it, what they've done is created an environment where it's a race to the bottom. You have too many vehicles, the fares are too low, and you don't have enough passengers for every driver on the street. So every driver is now stuck with a bunch of scraps. Well, you have thousands of drivers for whom this is their full-time job. It is the only way they make their living. And so for every you know drop in revenue that they see, because they're now doing shorter trips, right? They're not even, the yellow cab drivers are getting less long, long distance fares from the airport, for example, because the companies keep dropping the fares um, in order to attract other customers. Or, you know, they're, they're stuck in traffic longer. They're just seeing less passengers on the street. All of this means they're going home with less, with less income. And especially for yellow cab owner drivers, their expenses are the highest to begin with in the industry, across the industry. They have higher expenses than Uber. They also contribute more to the MTA than Uber does. And that's part of their expense. And so when the revenue is falling, people are just getting pushed over the edge of poverty. And so we want to see the regulated taxi meter as the minimum fare across the board. If Uber and Lyft are already charging, pass charging passengers higher, at least use the minimum rate as a wage floor so no company can attempt to go lower. And then when there is a raise, drivers across the industry can all benefit from it. Sorry, I don't know if everybody behind you is a shop driver. Uh, yes. Taxi yes. Driver. yes. Yeah. So no, I think no, we can do no, a show no. of hands. How many of you are going through financial hardship right now? All of us are going through financial oh, problems. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we get both hands. Taxes. All of us. You better ask how many of us is the, the, uh, 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 close to commit uh, suicide. Yeah, yeah. That would be better. Better because question. We want too much money to the bank. Uh, if it is a shame that the city administration stand still seeing us struggling to survive day after day after day we're a 24 hour industry and no one seems to really give a damn okay so we call on the mayor to do its job if they want to do something first a moratorium stop issuing stupid free licenses second come at the table because you sold us the exclusive right for what? To give it free for Uber, unlimited, or for Lyft? And Lyft is owned by Bloomberg's daughter? How long will we take it? It's enough, enough, it's enough. That's I right. drive a taxi enough for 40 years. Yeah. I invest in this city. Enough is enough. Everything what they have in 1990, I invest in this city. For what? To be robbed now. To be robbed by the government. We can't take it anymore. No way you can continue like this. But the, the speaker of the, the, the city hall, uh, Mr. Johnson said, uh, I, I think that's his name? Corey yeah. Johnson. He said that the public radio and uh, uh, New York uh, um, NPR, uh, we made a mistake. We didn't uh, uh, um, pass the, uh, stop the, the, the number in 215. Now, if you make a mistake, correct it. Why you don't correct it? Why you delay this bullshit? We are not stupid. We are hard workers. Yeah. We prefer to kill ourselves than to hurt anybody in, in this city. Everything we had, we invest in this city. Why Uber should get free? Or Lyft? Or Juno? Why? Yeah.
Because they are corporate. So because I am an individual, I have to be up. Look what they create. Look at this. How this Mr. Sally could buy so many cars? How so many licenses? Because it's free. I want to say, you know, the city should do better. So, you know, last 2008, 2009, the financial side, the housing side, I think the government is a bailout to the those company. So this time we have uh, all the taxi driver, taxi Madonna owner, we have a criticize. I think the state or city, they should bail out us. Please, I appreciate this. I hope I find my, my brother pay more safely. Thank you. NYPD, find our brother. I just, I just want to add though, right, that this is a real race to the bottom. Um, I mean, we're all friends, the brother Kenny, right? And we're all, you know, we're all calling on all the driver brothers and sisters to stay strong. You know, this is this is a financial crisis born of political failure, and we need political action to fix it so we can stop this stuff. New York is a 24-hour city because drivers are a 24-hour workforce and they need to be protected. But I, I do want to stress that the, it's a race to the bottom across the sector. We know there is a way in which owner drivers feel a, des feel a particular desperation that everything they invested into is being washed away, that what they imagine for their future, their retirement, is being washed away. You know, the medallion, no, no individual driver who works 60 to 70 hours a week was expecting to become a millionaire with the medallion. Individuals purchased medallions so they could go to work every day and they have some sense of security for their future. When we see that medallion on top of a yellow cap, what the individual and their family sees is the college fund for their children. It's a potential retirement home for when they become older. You know, it's this financial security, God forbid, in the moment of a health crisis. That's the human cost that is now being washed away because of the political failure. But, you know, two of the other drivers who committed suicide were actually livery drivers. Third driver was a black car driver. The fourth driver was a yellow cab owner driver. The, it is a race to the bottom that is destroying a full-time job and bringing workers that used to earn above minimum wage, putting them deeper into poverty. And with a future that looks really bleak because of a lack of political action. And that is why there is a hopelessness that's building. Um, Are you also asking for a bailout in the city? We, we, I mean, the Taxi Workers Alliance, our position at the moment, you know, we don't, things can still be fixed. We, look, for five years, Uber, Lyft, other Wall Street finance companies have been able to operate completely unfettered very little regulation. Whatever regulation has existed, it's existed on the drivers, but not on the companies. But it is not too late to fix it. And what we're calling for are such basic acts of fairness. Cap the number of vehicles. Eventually, as licenses expire and don't meet require renewal, retire those licenses so we, our city can get to a number of vehicles that can work for everybody, can protect our streets, and can protect full-time work. Regulate the fair so these companies cannot use anti-competitive practices by, by starving their own drivers and, by, you know, and starving the drivers of the competitive sector. Because that's what Uber and Lyft do. When they cut the rate of fare, 
on their drivers, they starve the Uber and Lyft drivers so they can starve the taxi drivers. That's the race to the bottom that we are looking to end. The, the, the brothers and sisters that are standing behind me, some of them drive yellow, some of them drive Uber, some of them drive green, some of them have family members that drive Uber or green or livery or black car. We are in this together because we know in order for the drivers to have a solution, we need to collectively stand together. So the proposal that we've been calling for, cap on the vehicles, you know, with, get, get to a number that works for everybody, the same minimum fare across the board, you know, a cap on the vehicle financing expenses on the FHV side, similar to what we already have on the yellow side. These are all basic acts of fairness that would actually go a long way to stabilizing this industry and at least give the drivers a sense of hope. Is there, uh, you talked about this financial struggle. Is there any catalyst in the weeks or days leading up to the mission that you can think of? Well, we, we, know for, we know that Melrose Credit Union, of all the credit unions that individual owners deal with, we know Melrose has been just the harshest at one point, they were, they were giving um, copies of what looked like legal filings to the individual owners, saying that you that they had to pay the total balance of their medallion loan, like $350,000, $400,000 overnight, or they would face foreclosure. You can imagine the anxiety that would create in people. And then uh, what we realize at the Taxi Workers Alliance is that those legal filings were never filed with the court. They were just prepared I used to intimidate the individuals who then started to scramble to put money together. The Melrose was also asking all the individuals, um, they were searching the, any um, assets owned by the individual's family members and asking them to put all those down as guarantees when they never asked for that in the beginning of the loan. And they're asking for that at a time when there's a lot of financial instability. And so you have all these individuals that are fearing that not only will their medallion be foreclosed, but also they could lose their home. You know, they could lose their private car. You know, they could lose anything else that they might have that could give them a little bit of financial security, which becomes even more important if they do lose their medallion. And so throughout the industry, like every, all the owner drivers, the most anxiety that I've heard so far are from the owner drivers whose loans have been through Melrose. What is really important to note is Melrose was taken over by the state. And all this intimidation and shake up, shakedown basically started after the state first took over Melrose. When the state took it over, many of us thought, okay, finally, you know, it's the public, go it's the government. They're supposed to protect the interests of the most vulnerable. That maybe we'll get some relief for this group of owner drivers. And instead, they have been the harshest treated of all the individuals across this industry. And Brother Kenny was part of that group. You know, there's a level of anxiety. Every day you're trying to make ends meet, which is hard enough. And then you've got your lender telling you that if you don't, you know, if you don't turn, if you don't basically pay off the entire loan in a very short period of time, that they're gonna foreclose on you and they're gonna go after any other asset that you might own. How on earth do you feel hopeful about your future if, if that's how you're being squeezed on a daily basis? And this is coming from a lender that's been taken over by the government. We know that Uber and Lyft combined spent more on lobbyists in 2016 than Walmart, Microsoft, and Amazon combined. 
we, the Taxi Workers Alliance, we had to sue the governor because when three of our Uber members filed for unemployment, the Department of Labor held all their claims. And we had to sue the governor in order for their claims to even be investigated. That was on behalf of Uber drivers, okay? So we have no faith that the, that the state government gave any proper direction when they took Melrose over. And, and all the problems with Melrose started when it was taken over by the state. Now it's the federal, but when it was first taken over by the state is when all these problems started. There, I mean, it, there, there's been a, there's been this like a frantic sense of desperation among the drivers. And owner drivers who have the highest expenses and are seeing the, the bleakest of the futures have felt a desperation that has been more palpable at times than even the, than the desperation of other drivers across this industry. Any other drivers in I know, like the president. 2016. 2016. 2016. Thank you. 2016. I know at the time, like their long-term CEO, like Alan Kaufman, was fired. And a lot of the people who were working at Melrose, that the in, that the drivers would have had like a relationship with, right? Um, a lot of them were fired. You know, and like now when you call, you can barely get through to them. You know, but I can. I mean, I can follow up. I'm a driver also, I mean, owner, I'm an owner, owner, driver, yeah, owner also. Okay. I have a loan, the same, at the Merrill, yeah, so, right. yes. And how much do you owe in the medallion? I still owe about $400,000 owe to the bank, so Merrill asked me, maybe in the next two months, this is my chance, in my, because my, is up. my balloon is up, 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 so we got to, so we got to find out, I don't know how to deal with the, how much, how much did you pay for your medallion when you bought it? I paid the medallion about uh, $410,000. Yes. How many years ago? About, about 12 years ago. 12 years, 12 years ago. ago, yes. So, so you refinance something Yeah, I mean, sometimes when you, we need some money to buy, buy the new car, to change the new car, so we got to borrow some money, refinance again. So after we, you know, I never pay end. Never. May, may I make one more point before, like just to give you guys an example of how squeezed people feel. Okay, on the, for hire vehicle, like the black car side, 
Um, you can you can use you like you can use any vehicle. Like it could be an old used car, but the TLC will still license it as a black car. Yellow cab side, of course, it has to be a brand new car. And you actually have, even if you have very little mileage on it, you have you must retire it after five or six years, right? So what's been happening is for a lot of the individuals, usually, you know, they would go to their lender, like like Richard is saying, they would go to the lender and they would get a loan to buy a new car. Lenders are not even loaning for you to buy a new car. And the TLC was not giving people extensions. Only a few months ago, they really started giving the extension. So when we say it's not a level playing field, these are the kinds of things we're talking about. So imagine that's a kind of pressure when you are a yellow cab owner driver. Only you face in this industry. And, his, and for his family. Imagine having to think about that when you're 56 years old. And he thought that was a dream to him, but now it's a death. CD should realize that. Okay, it's not a dream anymore. Get over with it. It's a death now. Well, thank you everybody. And please, um, please contact the NYPD. There's, there's enough sources here for them to really properly investigate and you know really um, you know give the family some answers that they deserve and answers that we're all asking for as a community. Investigation! No! Investigation! No! 
Investigation! No! Investigation! No! Investigation! NYPD, find our brother! 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 Please, find my brother. Come home safely. Thank you. Yes, Kenny.